It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the films of April 9th, 1999. we got four movies to look at today, so let's not waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and jump on into it, and we'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, Drew Barrymore and the romantic comedy Never Been Kissed. Semester in high school. <laughs> Josie Keller, you enroll Friday. You are looking at the newest undercover reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Josie, do you remember high school? Josie, 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 Josie! Oh, you were a geek. Big deal. You get to be 17 again. Okay, feeling good. Welcome to Shakespeare's As You Like It. Are you sure you're 17? I'm 17. Of course. She's never been hip. This is where the stories are. She's never been cool. You'll become friends with these people. Houston, Kristen, Gibby, what's up, girlfriends? Are you in special ed? And she's never been sexy. You will party with them. Ugh. You'll rave with them. You're gonna get jiggy with them. Until now. All you need is one person to think you're cool and you're in. You can't just come in here and be popular in one day. <laughs> Joseph Keller, she used to date the drama from the big bad booty daddy. Shut up. It's true. So let's hear it. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore. I'm not Josie Grossy anymore! 20th Century Fox presents... The guy is totally crunching on you. Drew Barrymore. Do I want to be crunched? Oh, uh, yeah. In a story about getting a second chance... I've waited my whole life to fit in and... I finally feel like I do. To make a first impression. You've been hiding something from everyone. No, I haven't. Totally ripped off my Malibu Barbie idea. Uh-uh, I'm Disco Barbie. I've kissed guys. I just haven't felt that thing. When you're my age, guys will be lined up around the block for you. You have to say that because you're my teacher. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I'm a teacher. I think I'm totally in. I'm so cool. So Drew Barrymore plays this Chicago Sun-Times copy editor who was desperate to graduate from perfectionist copy editor to reporter and gets her chance to do so when the owner of the company, played by Gary Marshall, orders the editor to cover the high scene, school scene by undercover. So she was a frustrated, ridiculed nerd when she was in high school, but she gets a popular makeover from her dropout, naturally funny brother, played by David Arquette. Uh, both siblings find love and joys of youth again, but in Josie's case, it's sensitive bachelor teacher, Sam Colson, who enjoys sophisticated conversation. As the publication deadline approaches, the price of blowing the cover seems even more daunting, yet inevitably she ultimately will, unless she sacrifices her career. And, um, you know, it's weird, because this came out around the same time as the movie we just talked about last time around, which was 10 Things I Hate About You. This film also has a weird cult following, too, and weird in the sense that nobody really ever talks about it like the classic movies of, like, you know, Mean Girls or something like from the, a lot of the John Hughes movies from the 1980s, but... This is another one that you see a lot on TV when it plays on Freeform and like on um, um, MTV. You see it on TV a lot, and it has had the lasting legacy. In fact, Barrymore has actually reprised the sketch several times on her talk show. And uh, this is also directed by Roger Gonzanel, whose last film was the infamous Home Alone 3. Is not a good director overall, but, um, you know, this is probably one of his better movies, honestly, the more I think about it, but... Um, it is a really good movie, and it works, I think, mostly because of that charm by Drew Barrymore. Like, usually Drew Barrymore will never really put in a bad performance, even if it's a terrible movie. She usually does give it her all, and in this film, she does a pretty good job playing high, playing an adult woman in high school again. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the inspiration for the show Strangers with Candy comes into play here, because the show kind of has a similar feel to something like this, except a little bit more weird, weird and more obscure because of the, the people who are writing that. But, um... This is a really good film, and it works because you have a good ensemble cast that she's working with, including Jessica Alba, David Arquette, Michael Bartan, Lily Sobieski, Molly Shannon, I talked about Gary Marshall, John C. Riley, James Franco. I mean, there is a good cast overall to here. Yeah, you get the same kind of tropes you see in these type of films, but what really does carry it is Drew Barrymore and her commitment to these roles, because she usually will give it 110%, and... This one was no exception to that. She does a really good job of handling this, and this makes for a fun little romantic comedy. It's a really enjoyable film. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. I really think you've... I mean, most of you probably have already seen it, but um, 
It's a film that has really grown to have a cult following over the years, and it has rightfully so, because it definitely deserves a lot of the attention, because it is a really enjoyable film. Uh, so that's never been kissed, so let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, another cult film from around this time, Doug Liman's Go. What are you up to tonight? We're going to this party tonight, this warehouse thing. Some sort of rave thing. Is this going to be cool? Just sit back and watch. I understand this party tonight. It's going to be huge. It's going to be a kick-ass time. Columbia Pictures invites you... You shouldn't do this, Rana. ...to a new kind of night on the town. <laughs> I think I feel something. Go! Don't do it. It's stuck. Give it a gun. Are you a virgin? What? Wow, bang fries. No. No, man, I told you my mother's mother's mother will mark. If you were any less black, you would be clear. Shut up! Get ready. Over the years, hit this edgiest comedy. This story car shot a bouncer and had sex with two women. Oh, yeah, yeah. That will define the generation. It was gonna go as bad as it could have. Hey! Is your British ass happy now? Go. Hey, what are we doing tomorrow? So this was Doug Liman's follow-up to Swingers, which was the movie that launched him into the stratosphere in Hollywood. You have uh, stories told from three different perspectives, the story of a bunch of young Californians trying to get some cash, do and deal some drugs, score money, have sex in Las Vegas, generally experience the rush of life, pretty much what you do in your teens around this time, in your 20s around this time, and uh, you see the names in there, you see William Feekner, Katie Holmes, Jay Moore, Sarah Pauly, uh, Scott Wolf, Tay Diggs, Breckin Meyer, Timothy Oliphant, uh, you see Melissa McCarthy in her first film role, uh, Jane Krakowski, then on Ally McBeal, and um... Didn't do so well at the box office, but it went on to have a cult following over the years. It's been acclaimed as one of those really, really underrated gems from around the time period. The dialogue is very good, written by John August. You have some really cool visual looks to the film that uh, uh, Mindman would later use for his action films shortly after this. And it moves at a fa fast enough pace where you never feel like it's trying to. Co it's never moving way too fast for you to get under, to get under your skin, to really distract you from what's going on here, and. Um, it's funny because you can definitely tell there's a lot of inspiration from Pulp Fiction. We were getting a lot of Pulp Fiction knockoffs around this time, but this is one that really feels like it never feels like it's directly ripping it off. It's taking a lot from it, but it's creating its own unique thing about it compared to what compared to what some of these other knockoffs have done. And it is very well done. It's a really solid film overall. I definitely say check it out if you haven't seen it. So let's go on to the next film, Jackie Chan in a dual role, Twin Dragons. These twin brothers are about to meet, I'm so sorry, for the first time. Ah! On April 9th, get ready. Let's go! For twice the action. Twice the fun. Are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. Twice the chance. Jackie Chan. Ah! And Jackie Chan. Twin Dragon. The PG-13 starts Friday Another one of Jackie Chan's movies that eventually made it to America. This actually came out in 1992 originally in Hong Kong. It took seven years to finally get here. And this is actually, I think, one of the few ones released by Miramax and not New Line Cinema, who put out a lot of those movies that brought him to the stratus that brought him into the the lexicon here in America. But um, I have a story where you have this woman that gives birth to identical twins, a criminal in the same hospital, attempts to escape, taking one of the twins hostage. The child is lost during the confusion, and they return to New York with one child. Years later, the guy, uh, John Ma is a famous conductor and pianist, unaware that his twin brother Boomer is a mechanic, race car driver, and bodyguard in Hong Kong. And when they travel to con their concert, the twins get caught up in each other's business, and anything happens here. Hilarity ensues. And um, it's a fun idea seeing two Jackie Chans in here, but... Just not the right execution. I think it's mostly because I've only seen the Amer the dub version, which cuts 16 minutes of scenes out of the original version. But even in this case, Jackie Chan himself has even come out and admitted that he wasn't happy with the way the film went, mostly because of the special effects and what happened there. But um, a fun idea, just not the right execution. It's one of those ones that has so much potential to it, but it just never really had that spark to really make it stand out, like some of Jackie Chan's other works. Um, uh, decent idea. Really could have been a whole lot better, though, with a better script and better handling of the effects. I mean, two Jackie Chans in one movie should be a fun idea on its own, but here, not so much. So that's Twin Dragon, so let's go ahead and move on to the last movie, and that is Foolish. I'm wondering why only white people get to see the aliens. Why come aliens don't come to the hood? They know if they park that spaceship in the hood, we jacking. 
I'm a storyteller. I'm a comedian. I'm a car salesman. A salesman with diamonds in his glasses. The only thing I'm trying to do is put together a legit comedy show starring my little brother, Foolish. So what do you think? Kiss my black. Master B, Eddie Griffin, Foolish. So this is Eddie Griffin playing a fast-rising nightclub comedian. His life is more difficult by his manager who wants to sell him out for big bucks. And his brother, uh, who's a scheming hood, whose dream is to start a comedy club with Foolish. Uh, he's played, of course, by Master P. And um, I've actually never seen this movie, so I don't really know exactly if, it has the, if it's any good or not. I mean, this is one of Eddie Griffin's first major roles that he was most notable for. Um, it was also the second film that No Limit Films put out after I got the hookup, and... Like I said, I really don't know if this is any good or not. I don't know if it's any. Go I don't know if it's any good. I don't know if it's anything f funny. I can't even look on to Wikipedia and see what the critical response is to it because it's not on there. But um, you know, other than that, though, I don't. Know. I mean, it looks like it could be decent. It'd be, it could be inter interesting to see Eddie Griffin in a more serious role, not just his typical comedic set setups that he usually puts himself in. But um, like I said, I really don't know for certain. But um, it's got Marla Gibbs, it's got jo it's got Andrew Dice Clay and Jonathan Banks in it, so it's got to be worth something at least, just to see them, so. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this one, but except I haven't seen it, I can't really say anything too much about it, so, um, there you go, foolish. And so with that said, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. When we meet next time, we'll have three movies to look at, including Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence in the movie Life, uh, Cookie's Fortune, and also Goodbye Lover with Patricia Arquette, so... Three films to look at next time around, and we will delve into those on the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the place on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So, uh, with that said, don't go too far away, because coming up after this gets updated onto the channel, a uh, new Time About the Movies flashback comes out. We'll be looking at the last weekend of October 1988, and the one movie that came out, The Comedy Fed. So, uh, be on the lookout for that. That's going to be coming up right after this.